very special guest here with no delay. Let's bring him out. The writer and director of both films, Ari Aster. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. It was 
said, there's a, a, like this little dread of images that were coming to me. But I was just, I, you know, I was just trying to, be, I was trying to come up with things that like bothered me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I thought, oh man, if I was walking around in this house right now, the door was open, and there was like a naked guy just looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, your first film, uh, it's just, the cast is extraordinary. Obviously, the mighty Tony Collette uh, performance is just right on the night. <laughs> So, is there an intimidation factor for you stepping onto your first feature, working with actors of this color? Yeah, yeah, of course. I was really scared. Um, <laughs> I was very nervous, uh, and I was lucky because they were all so great to work with um, and so committed. And um, yeah, I think I think everybody kind of just understood what the movie was, and it, it felt pretty. It, the shoot itself was pretty, um, it, was, it was an ambitious shoot that we, we had to get a lot every day. Um, How many days? It was 30 days. Um, and you know, we built the, the interior of the house. All of that was built, and we built a tree, you know, tree house. And, um, and yeah, I, yeah, it was, it was there was a lot to do, also because there were just a lot of like, pyrotechnics and there were a lot of, you know, there was a lot of people on wires, or one person on wires. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it, sorry, well, but the question is, but how, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was lots of different acting styles, too. I understand that Alex is more like immersive, right? That the actor almost, and uh, yeah. Tony is more pathetic. Like, talk to us about about getting Tony to that place, that almost mania, and long, generous takes. I think that's part of what sells it. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, she, again, she, I think she, you know, I just got the movie, and, um, and she came in kind of ready to, like, you know, pull herself inside out. But she is a much more, uh, she's able to detach herself and and then reattach. And Alex on this one was like really, he stayed in whatever that zone was uh, all the way through. Um, which is, yeah, that's great. I, I love, I, I love, I love, yeah. Actors being committed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't look very nice for him, but it's. who haven't seen Midsummer, I promise I'm not going to spoil anything, but, but I will be talking about both of them. Um, I was there at that night at Sundance in 2018, and when you're playing the film for the first time, it just we all felt like we were in the presence of something very new, something really special. What was that moment like for you? And did it feel like I was too much to see? Um, I, uh, it, it was a big relief, um, especially because the post-process, for reasons I won't get into, because it's so complicated, was really, really tough. Um, and we, we needed like some sort of uh, little victory. And, and so it, it was great. I mean, it felt very... Uh, like it, it was very warmly received over there, um, which means that the backlash should come early. <laughs> um, and uh, what was your question? Did I feel like it came too soon? I I I, I know a lot of people think it did. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, it's very like I, I feel like right now I'm, I'm up against like glass because the new film is coming out, 
and then trying to gauge what's what that is. Um, and there's a real, there's also like a, a feeling, there's like this postpartum thing where this week, especially, like, oh, the film's like not mine anymore. It's like, and I'm, I'm like, like recognizing that less and less because it's out in the world and it's being like metabolized by the culture. And, and, and so, like, it, it, which is, it's, it's a, like a weird thing that I have to get used to. Um, you, so, don't, you, know, you don't look back that much. You don't look like to look backwards. You seem to look. I, yeah, I try not to. Um, yeah, I, well. Which makes yeah. it very special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're ready for this. Guy. So, you know what? Speaking of the two of them together, I'm struck by how much of a piece they both feel. I, I mean, they're both obviously written by you, but Midsummer and Hereditary can both be seen as films about, like, tribes, finding your tribe, you know, almost. Do they come out of the same moment? Do they come out of the same, in terms of your writing and thinking about them? Yeah, I, I wrote them both very, very uh, close together, and I shot them like back to back. It, it, it really, um, the overlap was so extreme that I kind of, I, I see, I, I at least see the making and release of those movies as being kind of uh, just, yeah, they're compounded. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it wasn't as like, conscious as it maybe looks. Even the, oh, one's very, like, you know, one's very dark. There's a lot of night. And the other one's very bright and it's very sunny. Um, <laughs> I also, um, I am curious, I'm struck by the fact that they both have very strong, you know, sadness. Is that a mode that you're more comfortable with? Not necessarily. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I, I wrote a script, I was very young, and I gave it to somebody, and I was like, you can't write women. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I just try to put myself into whoever I'm writing, be it a, a man or a, or a woman. Um, so if it, it, if it works, I guess that's like the, the secret ingredient. But I, um, yeah, I mean, I, and, and the new film is, you know, about a man. There is there is a there's a, a through line here. Recently, <laughs> <laughs> so Florence you uh, also mentioned that um, you expressed to her that it was a breakup movie in summer, and that was those were your words to describe it as, and and that you work. She said that you worked with her and Jack on almost like therapy sessions. Was it was it a personal breakup movie for you? Yeah. Well, I, I wrote it right after, or I guess in the buzz and the grip of a breakup. Um, and so it was like sort of a, a conflagration there, you know. Um, and, uh, and were you gaslit in that relationship? <laughs> 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 I'm going to be tight about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Uh, so much more interesting to speculate about that anyway. Um, is he killing himself or is he killing somebody else? Um, uh, yeah, uh, you're sacrificing them, I should have said. I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I've, I've become very defensive this week because I've done a few interviews and just everything I say. <laughs> this is how the interviews with the ghost. Well, yeah, because then it's like, then you read about it in some clickbait thing, and it's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do some, some simpler questions. Uh, the production, part of especially, is just so stunning to, to see this. 
fields that you've created and these structures. And um, am I correct? You, you built this in Hungary. This wasn't built in Sweden, right? Yeah, it's built in, uh, in Budapest, or just outside. Just outside. And and there's I mean both that both these are and hereditary are amazing feats of production design. I, I think about the way you use it in hereditary work. With even from the first shot, where it seems like they're in a diorama, and there's a sense of control, and a sense of fate, control of them, and then of course it is some of these pointed structures and the, the sort of fields. How closely do you work with your production design? How forward is that process in your mind? Um, well, I mean, yeah, very closely. I, you know, we, as I said, we built the house in hereditary, but that wasn't necessarily plan at first. The idea was, you know, we don't have the money to build, so let's find a house. And then every house we found the sword worked. The idea was like, okay, well, let's demolish this wall, let's take this down. And you know, and then it's like, okay, well, that's that's not cheaper. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and the reason for that, the, the reason we needed all of those things, or I needed those things, was because I had built a shot list of very strict in my head, and I didn't want to deviate from it. Um, and it, you know, it, it included the blocking of the actors, and you know, and, I, it, it, and so I, I uh, and I've, I've loosened up a little bit since then. Um, this last one, especially, I, I tried to be looser about my plans um, in terms of blocking. In terms of in terms yeah. of what an actor decides to do when they step onto a set. Yeah, I came in with the same with the same kind of shot list. I just knew that I was not going to um, impose the block that was in my head on the actors. Um, but uh, and so anyway, that ended up being what we did on Hereditary, and, and was you know uh, fun and, and uh, felt like the way that. Uh, wanted to work again as far as just building environments and, and controlling things, and then uh, in a mid summer, it was clear that we had to just build that that village from scratch. So we just needed to find fields. Um, we shot in Hungary because you know uh, we could, we could do more with construction there with the budget. And um, you're also just shooting in daylight hours for the most part. Is that yeah. An enormous pressure added to it. Yeah, with the uh, just the intensity of the sunlight, what what we needed, we we would have a, about you know seven hours to, to eight tops that we could shoot, um, which isn't great um, <laughs> when you're trying to do a lot. Um, and uh, but and so you can get there a couple hours early and you take those first two hours with sunrise. I heard the story of that you that you got up hours early before Florence and before everyone to do the trek and get yourself ready to get your brain awake ahead of time. Really? Yes. Yeah. It's true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are bugs, all sorts of things I heard. Flying it. Oh yeah. Well, <coughs> yeah, I had, uh, I had this like tick tick repellent uh, like socks. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, even though you're talking about the pressures of the set, I'm struck watching in summer how much um, detail there is in it. Uh, runes, and even the name Harga, I think, comes from a, a, a song, you know, like there's so much research that goes into it. Um, why, why is that important? Feel like we, even the first image we see in Midsummer that you guys will see in just a few moments is that this, this image of almost like foretelling the whole story. What, what, why is that important to you? Uh, well, um, so okay, so I'm on. I'm gonna. I've been talking about this this week with for Bo, but it applies to this and it applies to it. it it's it applies to to what you're asking. Um, uh, Will Elder of, of Mad Magazine coined this term uh, "chicken fat," 
which is which is uh, used to describe like an overabundance of like background gags, like that just fill the panel. And that's something that I was thinking about a lot with uh, I was afraid, um, which is more comedy, but um, one reason I love chicken fat is that it feels like the artist is like really paying the reader or the viewer like real respect, like taking a lot of time and care with with the world. And I think you as a viewer can see that. You can see that level of detail and it it encourages any kind of engagement and it, um, and I think it's I think mutual um, respect grows out of that. Like you see, like, oh, there's a lot here for me to. So I, I try to pack the films as densely with detail as I can. Also, just because you don't get the opportunity to make a film every day, and you should seize that opportunity. And while you're making the film, you should be building it all the time. And not, I, I and I think some crew members sometimes go crazy because it's like. Thought we were finished with that. Like, oh, no, we haven't shot it yet, so I don't think we are. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, that's the. And, and, and I mean, and I've been blessed with uh, amazing crews that, for the most part, are like, you know, um, excited by that challenge. Um, and so, yeah, so that's my answer for that. But on, you know, on Midsummer, too, it's a few buildings. This community, this kind of ancient, you know, you, so you want to feel that they've, that it, it's built on, on a lot, you know, there's a lot, there, there's a history there, and that, and that, and, and so, yeah, and, and, and it was kind of important to, to keep it in the background, to make, to make sure it was felt, but not necessarily, you know, slathered all over you. Felt, and also the kind of details that are rewarded on the second viewing. Like you say, the relationship that gets built with an audience, a careful viewer. Even if you look in Dan's dorm room, in the beginning, you see the post of her over there. There's so much detail. You, you hear about this game called Skin and the Fool, and you will eventually see that game, you know? Like, there's, there's a lot of play in this. So I'm, I'm curious, though, Midsummer that came out was very well received. Why? Did you feel the need to make a director's cut? Um, gosh, I don't want to talk about this. I, do I, well, at the time, it was very hard to cut down. The film was, the film, the first assembly was like three and a half hours or more. And, you know, there's, that movie has no business being that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Most great, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, a lot of, you know, we, we shipped at it for a long time and got it to three hours. And at that point, I was like, okay, I can't see this going down anymore, I feel. So, and, the, and then we kind of kept removing scenes, and then we got to the theatrical cut, which I felt by the time we got there, and I, you know, had licked my wounds. That, <laughs> That works, but they each one knew that, that was a difficult process and said, Would you want to do a director's cut? And so and I thought, okay, yeah, let's do it. Because there were, at, at the time there were several scenes that I uh, was upset to have had, had to take out. Um, and then now but so so we I put those back in. It, it, it went up by 20 something minutes. And it was so quickly after we finished the theatrical cut that we had to assemble that. Uh, so uh, there, there was so little time um, that, you know, I, I often think, huh, I wonder what I would have done with a director's cut if it was like, ten, like a year later, uh, or even like six months later. Because there's some, I think it might be a little, like there are maybe a couple things that I maybe would actually remove. Um, but so I, I kind of land somewhere between favoring the theatrical cut and the uh, director's cut. I think I probably would want you to have all the information that comes with the director's cut. And I would want 
times you are a little bit tight. Um, that's that's, the, the, that's the, the, the true. Yeah. These films have been enormously successful for each one for, and they give you a lot of latitude. Uh, I, I'll ask a ghost question. Have they asked you about making a sequel to you? Well, no. <laughs> Did you do that opening shot? Like, how? You know, how when, did you it, do the when it turned shot? into a miniature into in like the real thing. Um, well, uh, let's see. Um, it was on, it was on a soundstage, so outside the window where you see the treehouse and the, at, 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 at the very beginning. That's green screen. So it's a plate that we had to get of the drugs on, uh, on location. And then when you get to the uh, the dollhouse that you know has the has one wall removed, so it's like a picture of you, it's a diorama view of the treehouse. Uh, or sorry, the, the dollhouse of the of the the, the Graham family home. Um, you know, all of that is a miniature, except for the except for Peter's bedroom, which which you know was pretty much just that 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 was uh, that had markers on it, so it, you know the the equivalent of green screen, and then we shot Peter's bedroom, uh, which had one wall removed in wide, and then placed it. Parallax is always changing because you're moving towards it. So it was 
very hard shot to actually get right in the effects. But that's how we did that. But obviously, some important film, right? Set. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they're like, yeah. I mean, I said it a lot during that, that press tour, but yeah, they're like dolls in the dollhouse. Like bears are feeding. Um, yeah, right there, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I thought it was really interesting how I hadn't seen Hereditary since it came out in the theater. I've seen it a couple of times at home, but I noticed a lot of more humor in it this time. Uh, but I just want to just, like wonder if you any like you realized any of that afterwards or if a lot of it was intentional. But personally, I found it funny this time, and I think maybe the crowd like a lot of it. I thought that was really like interesting to see the perspective of it. Yeah, no, I, I find a lot of it funny. <laughs> Arguably two on the nose. Do we have a good question here about Midsummer? Yes. Yes. Very good. Same. Okay. Really fun. I just want to know how you did the hammer smash. The salt. <laughs> how can I do it? Well, I did. It's like it's so. Uh, well, actually, this is kind of a fun thing. We we created a dummy for 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 BR. Bjorn plays the old man, um, and uh, and his head was collapsible, but like by remote control, <laughs> so it had to be timed so that the head would collapse right as the hammer came down. So and it was like it would come right back up, you know, right there. You'll actually notice you'll notice in the uh, in one of the kind of dream, like psychedelic dream sequences that his head just kind of, does kind of reassemble. That's not like, that's, that's like the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you asked and we got the, like you're in the front. Okay. Um, so when you mentioned about trying to stuff as much detail into your movies, do, do, do you, do you feel like you have a bit of a self-pressure on yourself that you won't be able to tell your story fully? Or like, wh why do you, besides the saying like you, you don't make a movie, you can't, besides saying that you don't make a movie every day, what, what's a, what's, why do you feel like you have to put as much detail into your work? 
Well, it's not, it's not a pressure thing, it's a fun. It's like really, I, the, more I, the more I build the world up and build it out, and it, like, the more I like the world, you know what I mean? Like, the more I feel like, I, it, it's, it's, a, it's satisfying. Um, and sometimes you get to see things that like, you know, oh shit, it's time to shoot that. And we don't have, we didn't have the time or the resources and that, and, that, and you know, it, it, it always stings when you feel like you left something on the table or like something just isn't as good as it could be. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, when uh, each of these films is like an opportunity to just kind of immerse yourself in whatever the world is. I think that's the first time I heard you say that filmmaking was fun. Is <laughs> <laughs> fun for you? Yeah, it's not, it's just a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm having fun. It, it is fun, but I'm also like you know, like a stressed out, but never she guy. And so, and you, you know, you, you go, you go to the set, and you have however many hours to get everything you need. And you just, you pray that nothing's going to go wrong, or that like, a few more things go wrong than they go right, and then you're going to get everything. And then sometimes you just don't get everything one day, so, that, so like two scenes all of a sudden move to the next day, which was planned you know, in such a way as to like, you know, not anticipate that. And, and then, you know, and so it's just, it's just, it feels like, you know, you're just trying not to drown. Like, why? Um, and so...